I'm here testing the new Bosch CX uh, Performance CX, and I've also got here the new race motor. This is this one. So nice. You really feel the extra push, and uh, this makes the bike feel light up there, to be honest. So this is Hans Ray's Bosch equipped GT secret, let's call it. Now, there's interesting stats available here. I've got two bikes, but they're on. We've got an Orbea and we've got a Mondraker. What are the stats? So you've got 100 Newton meters of torque, 750 watts of peak power, yeah, and 250 watts of nominal power. Now, this motor is very special. It's 2.7 kilos, the race version, magnesium outer, a titanium uh, central axle that's hollow, techie parts inside, aerospace materials, etc., to make the motor lighter and more high performance. So the software's changed quite a lot. They've now introduced a new mode called EMTB Plus. EMTB Plus gives you uh, a faster sort of more responsive uh, mode on the uh, on the motor and that is actually something you'll be able to install on any smart system including i think the performance cx4 okay the battery hasn't changed it's still 800 watts they do say though obviously if you're putting out more power the range will decrease in the extra power mode but the mtb plus mode is the one we used and that is obviously the one which for me was pretty much the most interesting mode that i've been using and also the race mode in this motor here so we also have a new display to talk about. It's the new Bosch CX400C, and it's integrated into the top tube. So now you can retrofit it as well to bikes that have that space available already. It's actually one of the best displays I've seen on the market. I found Danny McCaskill. He's got a Red Bull helmet, if you noticed. This man, should you, aren't you should, supposed to be jumping off the top of that? Oh, that's, that's later. Mountain. <laughs> Hands, no way, Ray. <laughs> Uh, another trials rider. So I told me everything I know. So still teaching me today. I, so. I grew old watching Danny's videos. <laughs> <laughs> so are you actually going to do any mountain stuff while you're here? Well, I think so. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what the plans are, but I think we're going to go out for some fun trails. And, uh, cool. Yeah. And you're on the Santa Cruz Vala, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, this one's been pretty trashed. Hans is on a GT, but it's a Bosch GT, which doesn't exist. It is, just one. <laughs> so the official word is GT on pause, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, there's some restructuring going on, so okay. nobody really knows, but it's not done. Anyway, so we're going to be riding with you today and having a good time. Yeah, I'm going to try out the new Bosch systems with yeah. the new software upgrade, so yeah, it'll be, it'll be mind blowing. Grazie, io non ho faccio con la linea perché la mia schiena definitely works. So he's doing, he's, he's gonna bunny hop it, but he's using it to get. Oh, man. <laughs> we all feel like when you're going up a step, you want that kind of extra little bit of uh, push, and uh, extended push really kind of just makes the bike feel light up there, to be honest. Wow. Wow. Incredible. Straight up the hill, we felt the bike was really lively. Attitude from the motor. It gives you the grip and the traction you need, especially on the really technical stuff. When we hit it, you know, the bike just doesn't lose traction. It keeps on going. Funzione. No, this is a control dynamic. Like with the other motor, we actually turned the dynamic grip down and up to fiddle with the different traction levels. This is on the MTV Plus. Use on cadence, veloce, so stiamo andando. Motore. Wow. Pretty grip. Ah, it's a desk in the mezzo. In the MT Plus mode, the motor's really dynamic. It really responds. It feels like you're racing along, really on the edge of having fun all the time. On the really technical stuff, it gets really useful to have that super responsive motor. Pass the control. Sorry. Slow down, slow down. Uh, wow, it's a lot of power. Yeah, that was amazing. That kind of technical restart and climb wasn't possible with the old system. The MTV Plus gives you the possibility to, like, when you go up steps like this. Wow. It just, just kind of keeps the bike moving. So, I mean, I was never very good at actual uh, real competition trials. So. <laughs> I think you're having to work harder than me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> it really helps. So how much is your body weight moving, helping it move, and how much is the motor, would you well, say? Well, you're kind of doing a bit of both. The extended boost really helps. Like, 
it kind of kind of eliminates the base weight when it comes to going up a step. Yeah. Just gives you that, and then, or if you get to the top of the step, you're able to just give a little kick. But the the MTB Plus, uh, you know, it really depends on how much power you put through the pedal, or how much uh, yeah. extended boost it gives you. So it just really feels natural. So. Do you prefer riding e-bike trials or normal trials? I mean, I spend a lot more, a lot, a lot, a lot more time on the e-bike these days. So really, I mean, I, I, I love a good techie climb. Especially if it's like a slab rock or, yeah. you know, like where you've got like pure solid grip. Mm -hmm. um, I like about both. Which one gives you more physical uh, workout or are they both the same? I mean, your IRA is going to peak way more on the, uh, yeah, the MTB, you're going to go to your limit. Yeah. Whereas I feel you kind of, on the EMTB, it tends to be where you just lose, it's like the peak of grip mm -hmm. or like say the front wheel seat is tends to be the, you know you can kind of work within a ra that range a little bit more you don't have to redline. So, there we go, yeah. words from the master. For the second ride of the day we got to ride the CXR race and get into that. You can see here the motor is the same size, different colour, slight grey colour but it works in combination with the 400c screen, the system controller. Riding up the trails immediately, the bike feels even more powerful because it's got a 400% support mode on this uh, system, and that gives you a lot of grip on some really technical climbs. The noise levels and the smoothness of riding this motor are really clear there. It's the quietest motor we've tried from all of the different systems on the market so far. It really sits well and feels like you're pedaling a bicycle. You don't have that feeling that it's running away from you at all and you're hanging off the back. There's no motorbike feeling in my opinion at all. I'm with Sean Fingerhut, who's half English, <laughs> half German. Yeah. We're talking about this little tiny chip. No, we're not talking about that, but that's the secret to ABS, isn't it? To the new ABS control, yeah. Wow, it's impressive. Nice. No, no more uh, need for a rear wheel speed sensor. That's crazy. With high resolution. Also this, this is like really light. Yeah. What is that that I have? This is... Um, the crank spindle from the new performance line CXR. It's completely made of titanium, so it drops about nearly half the weight compared to the steel crank spindle that we have on there. Okay, so Sean is in charge, of, is a product manager, no? Yes, I'm the product manager for the performance line CX and CXR. They're both made of the same material, yeah? Magnesium on the outside? Yes, correct. We have a magnesium housing on the outside. The internals mostly are the same, except for the crank spindle that we just saw is titanium yeah. versus steel. And we have these ceramic bearings, they shave off a little bit of weight. What do we do with the, with the energy and the power to create that 250 watts average? What do we have to do? So the, the 250 watts average, it's um, the, the history behind this, Klaus knows it much better than yeah. I do because he's been in the business much longer than I have. Yeah. Um, and he explained to you this morning, but yeah, the, general, the general idea is the 250 watts nominal rate of power. Once the whole system is heated up to a state where you have to go into heat protection. Okay. So once you reach this temperature where everything has to go like into a heat protection mode, then there is a certain time span defined by which at the, if you get to the end of this, your system is only out, allowed to output 250 watts of mechanical power. Okay. So you see it's already very complicated, yes. this explanation. Yes. And really difficult to see how, it, under which conditions might this happen because heating up a motor generally, um, yeah, it varies so much on riding scenarios, weather, yeah. ambient temperature. Yeah. Um, there's so much rider input, riding mode, even battery size mm -hmm. um, can have an effect on which components um, get how how hot they get. Oh, you know. Okay. So mm. all this, it's so complicated to define. Um, so this is also the opinion um, that we that we had this morning from Klaus saying it doesn't really make that much sense because it's really not not very precise so it makes much more sense to say hey systems should have a maximum peak power um, which would fit than, inside that 250 watts yes i mean that systems all put out can put out way more yeah. um, than these 250 watts because the definition is it, it leaves so many loopholes yeah um yeah and as we've experienced riding today yeah um, i think 
you even notice going from 600 to 750 watts for this, the new limit on the performance yeah. upgrade. This is a significant difference. In so in our opinion um, at Bosch is what we say, we have like these, um, this trio of the three values that we always communicate when it's when we talk about riding performance. So the peak power yeah. that we have is um, one essential value because this defines how fast you can actually go up a hill, for example. Yeah. The torque, which now goes from 85 up to 100 newton meters, this more or less defines how quickly you can accelerate. So how okay. much force the rear wheel can put to the ground, mm -hmm. or put in more simple terms, you can ride the same scenario that you could ride with 85 newton meters in a harder gear. It's big important factors is when it comes to controllability and how you can control this power is the assistance factor. Okay. And this is what we have, the CXR, comes with 400% assistance factor. So if I put 100 in, yes. it multiplies it by four, so I get a total of 500? Correct, so the okay. motor will give you 400 additional watts at the maximum. Mm. But this also means that you will have to put in a not insignificant amount of power yourself to get these 750 watts. Now we've also got the battery though to deal with and the range, okay? So Correct. obviously if we put out more power, what happens to the range? Put it into simple terms, let's say we, we go back in time a bit and take the 750 watt hour battery that we had. Yes. If we are now outputting 750 watts on a 750 watt, um, watt hour battery, 750 watt hours will output 750 watts for one hour, then the battery is empty. This is what it says, basically. Mm -hmm. So if we're putting out 750 watts of mechanical power, we could do this on a 750 watt hour battery, in theory, for one hour. But then there's still things like efficiency and so on. This motor is very quiet. Yeah. In my experience, compared to the other motors I've tried recently, it's probably the quietest. How yeah. did you do that? Well, there's a lot of engineering expertise in this. Try to uh -huh. um, find a package that really works to make everything quiet. So there's a lot of quite common things like helical gearing and the, and the gears tend to make for a more of a silent experience. But all in all, there's a lot of sound design and engineering going into here. And with the brushless motors that we have, the way you control the motor, this can also have a large effect on how the um, sound of the motor comes out. Could you confirm to me then, this sounds like then it's all an engineering decision. You know Absolutely. you have physical properties which cannot change, so you just decide how to put them together to create the product yeah. you want. It's always, there's always a lot of assumptions or you always have to take assumptions to say what, where do you want this product to be placed and then you work with um, the limits that are given to you. And we have a great team mm. of software engineers and application engineers that are mm. um, putting, yeah, they have crazy amounts of know-how that go into there and they are so in love with all these details and then with all the test riders that mm -hmm. we have that ride for us, um, yeah, they really get hung up in, mm -hmm. in the smallest nooks and crannies, if you like, of all mm -hmm. um, of, of this whole e-bike system. And that makes it kind of, yeah, the whole experience so refined. Pretty uh, comprehensive look at the system. If you've got more questions, don't forget to write them in the comments. So smooth. Ooh. <laughs> okay everyone so that's the end of the video i just wanted to sort of say thanks for bosch for showing us the system it's really very impressive i'm very impressed it's definitely the smoothest one i've tried on the market i've tried them all now and the one with the best power control the one that gives you the sensation of riding a bike but under control and that's the thing i hope that the video was interesting. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. I do want to point out that the software is also updatable on any smart system software. So I think you can also get EMTB Plus on the CX Gen 4, I think. This motor here, the race motor, I hope to have on another bike at some point. Uh, really an impressive uh, piece of kit. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next video. Oh, it's broke. <laughs> <laughs> we did it in practice. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Clive. Uh, <laughs>